Hi, my name is Robert Jeffrey, and I'm with Roanoke City Council for the City of Roanoke. And today I'm going to read a book um, about Malcolm X. Malcolm X is a great leader in our community and in our country. And I'm going to read a book about Malcolm Litter. Malcolm Litter was a young man who eventually came, became a great leader, Malcolm X. And the book is written by Isaiah Shabazz, who is the daughter of Malcolm X, and is also illustrated by A.J. Ford. And the title is Malcolm Little, The Boy Who Grew Up to Become Malcolm X. Malcolm X was one of the most influential men in American history. But before he became Malcolm X, he was Malcolm Little. Malcolm was born on May 19, 1925, in a small Midwestern town of Omaha, Nebraska. He was born into a tight-knit family with parents who not only encouraged his natural curiosity as a boy, but also taught him lessons about discipline, fortitude, and self-determination. Malcolm's father was Earl Litter, and there was nothing little about him. Papa Earl was a strong, broad, and towering man. His smooth, dark skin was as beautiful as the midnight sky. His voice resounded like gentle thunder whenever he spoke. His protection and guidance stretched up and around his family like the great live oak trees in his home state of Georgia. Malcolm's mother was Louise Norton. Louise was born in the island country of Grenada, West Indies. It was a place known as the Spice Island, where the sweet smell of nutmeg and cocoa swirled together in the tropical air. Louise was a bright student who excelled at reading and math. She began asking questions at an early age about the mistreatment of people of color in her hometown. After Louise graduated from school, she left for Montreal, Canada to join her uncle Egerton, who was also a co-founder of the Marcus Garvey movement. Followers of Garvey believe that all humans are created equal. In Montreal, Louise met the giant gentleman named Earl Little. Both of them have traveled to Montreal, focused on joining the struggle for freedom and justice. And this is the picture of Malcolm X's mother and father. Earl and Louise were soon married. The happy couple moved to rural Midwest and soon became the parents of seven children, Wilfred, Hilda, Philbert, Malcolm, Reginald, Yvonne, and Wesley. Earl and Louise cherished their family and instilled in their children values of faith in God and self-love of honesty integrity and brotherhood and equality. The little children were happy and romped endlessly around the little home and land in Omaha, Nebraska. Malcolm was the middle child and Malcolm was different. He was full of questions, a natural leader and a full loving prankster along with his brothers and sisters he was always up to something. When Malcolm was four years old, something horrifying happened that he would never forget. One night, while the little family was sound asleep and the percussive hiss hum of the cricket song whistled quietly in the dark, the loud crackle of a blazing fire awakened them. Terror clutched Malcolm's heart 
as he realized the blaze was consuming his home. Fortunately, Malcolm and his family escaped the raging inferno, and they watched in disbelief as their beloved home burned to the ground. They would later learn that the flames had been set by townspeople who disagreed with their family's beliefs about universal equality and justice. The fire was a sad sign of ignorance and tolerance. And now I will be skipping forward in the book and talk about the life of Malcolm X. But the young boy who now learned so much from his parents lost his father Earl to the brute force of racism and the narrow mindedness of Ku Klux Klan members and their brethren in the Black Legion. They disagreed with Earl and Louise beliefs in equality and apparently they also disagreed with Earl's right to live in a free society. In fact, they did not seem to think that he had the right to live at all. And it quickly became clear that the hate and fury that was behind the fire that burned the little house down many years ago was now back again. Only this time, the hate was so strong, it took Earl Little away from his family forever. Louise left on her own to manage the household and the six acres of land and fend for her children. She sewed, crocheted, and rented out garden space on her land. The two oldest children, Wilford and Hilda, set out to help their mother with raising the younger siblings in keeping the little family close and intact. It was the era of the Great Depression and times got harder and harder. Soon local officials began to assert that Louise was no longer fit to care for her children and they threatened to take away the family land. The proud loving mother of whom the children depended was now being taken away from them reasons that no one dared to explain. I will be skipping forward to another part of the book. Without his parents' guidance, guidance Malcolm became disobedient and required structure of reform school. But due to his academic uh, indebtedness, he was eventually enrolled in Mason Junior High School. When he arrived, he was the only student of color. Malcolm felt like he was a fish out of water. His brothers and sisters were gone. He missed the sound of his mother's voice. He longed for the passionate speeches of his father gave about the teachings of Marcus Gavi. He yearned to hear the gifted orator inspire people to care about history, justice, and equal rights for all mankind. As the only African American student in his new school, Malcolm would have to blaze his own path toward discovering the remaining truths of his own identity. Then one day, something extraordinary happened. Malcolm Little, the boy who was raised on the vision of freedom and justice, was elected class president by the students in his seventh grade class. When they looked at Malcolm, they no longer saw a mournful child lost in the world. Now they saw a smart, insightful, charming winner. They voted for a leader who believed in equality and who, read, who radiated optimism. Their open-mindedness symbolized hope 
for generations to come. What I read to you today was the book about Malcolm Little, the boy who grew up to become Malcolm X. You can receive this book and other books at our Rona Public Library and learn more about the history of Malcolm X and other great heroes in our country.